Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. I lived in the shadows, out of sight of the light of liberty, and I heard their voices call out to me in the dark. They were the voices of slaves. They were the voices of my people. When I heard them, the earth moved under me, rockets burst in my head. They were the voices of God. I was moved. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt land, tell all old Pharaoh to let my people go. Destination Freedom. <laughs> The Chicago Defender and Station WMAQ bring you Destination Freedom, a special radio series dramatizing the great democratic traditions of the Negro people, interwoven in the pageant of history and a part of America's own Destination Freedom. Today, Destination Freedom dramatizes the story of one of the most remarkable women in world history. It is the story of Harriet Tubman, an American Moses, the liberator of 300 slaves, the fearless pilots of the pre-Civil War Underground Railway. Today we tell of the early life of Harriet Tubman, the chapter entitled, Railway to Freedom. Hello, Pharaoh, to let my people go. The voices were still that day on a plantation in Maryland where I grew wild like a weed, one of eleven children, one of a dozen slaves. The voices were still, or I was asleep. But I woke up one day when I heard a slave sing a song. We were husking corn. I knew the song, but there was something in the way he sang it. I stopped husking corn and listened. looked up at him and said, Saul? Huh? What were you singing? Oh, just a little old song. What does it mean, Saul? Are you nigh as old as I am? You're old enough to know? Know what? To know the ways of the Underground Railroad, Harriet. To know there's a train waiting tonight. And how to tell those who want to come aboard to come aboard. How do you know all of that? The Talbot woman says so. She keeps track of the train. And you say you're going to cross over and go... Look, see the way the old master's looking? He's on to it. Well, I'm going to my cabin. Got to get my things. I kept my eyes open, wide. Saul walked to his cabin. The master followed him. I followed them both. And as I came to the cabin, I heard angry voices. Oh. I stood in the doorway and watched. Run away, will you? No. I'll kill you. Let go. You're choking me. Let me go. I'll kill you. That's what. I'll kill you. I know about your plot. I've watched you. Let me go. Saul broke away and ran out past me. The master came after him with an iron bar in his hand. And I... I stepped in the way. I blocked the door. Get out of my way, girl. Move or I'll crack your devilish head. I was afraid, but I wouldn't move. I saw him lift the iron bar, and then his hand struck down. The earth moved, and the rocket burst in my head. It was dark all around me. I seemed to be lying in a dark river, dreaming. Dreaming that I heard my mother saying, Harriet, you're hurt. Lie back, child. Lie back. I dreamed I heard the master come in and say, 
block my way. Why can't she be peaceful like her brothers? I should have a whip. Well, she's a good child. She she just followed a mind. She's a very good child. And I dreamed the master came in again and again to look at me. He had slave buyers with him, and he'd say... There she is, a girl in her prime. How much am I bid? How did that deep scar get in her head? I buy live slaves, not dead ones. Well, is she dead or alive? Of course she's alive. Next, how much am I bid? She lies there staring like she's in another world, like she's sleeping with her eyes open. I bid nothing. I went on dreaming and dreaming. Inside my head, the rockets kept bursting. I dreamed of a land far away. And when I tried to get up to go, I'd hear my mother say, Harry, lie back. Tossing like that, you'll throw yourself out of bed, child. Lie back. I sank back into the dark river. I lay there floating a long, long time before I heard her say, Now, stand up, Harriet. Look, there you're standing again. Uh, again? It's a miracle. Wait till I tell you, brothers. We've nursed you back to life. Nobody believed you'd live. How long was I sick? Two seasons. Two seasons just lying here? Oh, you'd sleep sometimes, and you'd talk out loud sometimes, like you was dreaming. You'd talk about the master. Don't you remember? Mm, some things. I remember some dreams. I remember dreaming about Nat Turner. Don't speak his name out loud. I dreamed I heard Nat Turner call Nonsense. Him. He's been hanged in Barrett ten years, girl. Get him and his deeds out of your mind. He called me and told me how he burned the plantations and made an army of slaves to fight. And he called me and said, Harriet, do what I did. And I said, I can't do what men do. I can't lead an army. Then he said, you can do more. You can lead an army across the River Jordan. If that's all you dream, then, then keep quiet. That was not all. Didn't you dream good things? Yes. I did dream once I was praying. I was praying for the master and all the masters. They were looking down at me to see if I was worth buying. That was no dream. They were here. I dream I prayed to the Lord to change their hearts. But he would not. Then I said, Lord, if you won't change them, kill them. Well. Who talks of killing on my grounds? Just another plot. Well, it's just Harriet's first day out of bed, Master Bodias. He can stand up now. So this is a little hero who tried to help Saul escape, huh? Now Saul will work his life out in the field. Where you'll go. Oh, the child is weak, Master. The child is worth it. Scrawny, sickly, she's been a burden to me. But now she'll earn her share. And whatever's in that addle head of yours, girl, get it out. There'll be no revolts, no escape. If you've got any sense left, you'll obey laws. You'll be satisfied. You work in the field. No, please. She's too weak to work in the field. Please. She's too weak to eat. Please. Mother, stand up. The master's right. It's in the field where I should work. Perhaps you really are half-witted. You want the field, huh? I want to work where there'll be fresh air and sunshine. I want to work where I'll grow strong. I'll take the field. I went into the field. I was weak. I wanted to be strong. I plowed the ground, dug the ditches. I drove oxen. I worked in the yards. I did a man's work. I kept my dreams wrapped around me in the sunshine and the open air. Though some slaves still slipped off on the strange underground railroad, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready until I lost my fears. I lost them the day the master passed me and said, Well, I see you've done your work well, Harriet. Yes. I've worked. Uh-huh. And I can see why you're stronger than anyone else in the county now. In fact, I think you're strong enough to be sold to the Georgia rice field. Yes, you should bring a right nice fee, don't you think so? He didn't wait for my answer. But I thought, if I'm strong enough to bring a fee, I'm strong enough to be free. When night fell, I went to the cabin of my brothers, George and Lewis. Fear was all around us. I whispered the plan to escape to them. I don't trust your plan, Harriet. They patrol day and night. Just the day six men were branded. Who's going to guide us? Saul told me about a woman named Talbert. She can give us money and help. You see, George, let Harriet free us. All right. 
We'll meet you in the North Woods whenever you say. But I don't like it. It's too risky. I slipped away. I went across the valley to the house of poor white cobblers, the Talbots. Mrs. Talbot saw me coming and motioned to me to stay in the yard. She went in her house and came out again with a letter in her hand. Here's some money. Not much, but that's all I have. Take this letter to the next station. They'll help you from there. How far? It's near the border of a free state, Pennsylvania. There'll be a house with a cross on the door. Eileen! Eileen, who are you talking to? Nobody, Jed. Nobody. Just looking at the stars is all. My old man, he hates the slaves. They're the cause of us being poor. Eileen! You getting mixed up in that underground business again? No, Jed, no. I'm coming. Hurry now. I'll go. I'll know the way. Just follow the North Star. Eileen! Early! I went back to my brothers. I found them in the woods. My heart was pounding. A roar was building up in my head. I talked to them on the trip, but they said... Tonight they're watching all the roads. They always watch the roads. But running against them like this is certain death. And what is slavery? We'll take our chances. You know nothing of the North, you know. I'll not risk it with you. You mean that? I mean it. And you, little brother. Last night, another slave was sent to the gallows. He'd been betrayed by those he thought were friends. Your friends could be the same. I'll take my chances here. Stay here. Come on, be sensible. No. No, I won't stay here. Why risk it now? Because there are two things I've got a right to. Liberty or death. One or the other I mean to have. I shall fight for my liberty. And when the time comes for me to go, the Lord will let them kill me. If you go, you'll go alone. I'll go alone. Then go your way. Lewis, come on. Come on. Brother. Oh, brother, don't leave me alone. Brother. The earth moved again. The rocket off in my head again. I turned round and round. I thought of my mother, brother's sister in the row of cabins I could see from where I stood. Then I turned and looked up at the North Star. It was brighter than any star I'd ever seen. I walked toward it. I made my way through the fields and forests, past villages and farms, past patrols and guards, sleeping in the open, in barns and under haystacks. My eyes watched the North Star until I came down into a valley. Then I saw it. I saw a block of houses and on one there was a cross. I forgot the slave hunters and the patrols and broke into the open and ran toward it. Someone behind me shouted. Hey, you. Stop. Stop. The patrolman. He seen me. Stop. I ran down into the valley toward the house. I heard the shot and stumbled. I got up and ran on until I lost sight of him. I reached the door. Throw myself on it and beat and beat against it. Let me in, please, let me in. The door opened, and I was inside. It seemed like a dream. I stretched out my hand, and a hand met mine. It was warm. Two strange faces looked into mine. One said, Levi, take her behind the door. The patrol's coming. You help the woman. Let me handle the patrol, Hannah. They'll be suspicious of you. They're coming. What will you tell them? I'll tell them the truth. Hannah, you can't let them take her back. Wait, woman. I live by my religion. They know that. I'll let them in and answer them. Well, ma'am, do you have to tear my door down? I'm sorry, Madam Godman. A runaway slave came this way, trying to cross the state line, I reckon. I'm only doing my duty. And what do you expect me to do? Well, my men are searching the house al- houses along this way. You want I... to search my house? Oh, no. You're a woman of God. You'll tell the truth. Have you seen a slave come this way? A slave? A slave. I've never seen a slave. You're at the wrong door. Thank you, Madam Governor. Thank you. You did it, Hannah. The Lord will forgive those who lie to save a life. I did not lie. But you told him... I told the truth. He asked if I'd seen a slave. The Lord says all men are brothers. In the eyes of God, there are no slaves. There are only men and women. I believe God. Who do you believe, Levi? I 
believed I was in a new world. And when I was rested, my new friend said, No, you're not in free territory yet. This is just the first station on the Underground Railroad. Our station stretched like spider webs. South, north, east. Puritans, Quakers, Negroes run them. You won't be on free ground till you go up the hill through the woods and cross the Pennsylvania line. From there, it's easy. No high sheriffs to hunt you down. Go where you please. Are you ready? To cross that line? <laughs> I've been ready a long time. When night came, I slipped through the woods. I struck out toward the border. I walked through the woods until it came over me that, like in a dream, I had crossed the line. I had crossed the River Jordan. I was free. <laughs> and looked around me. I was free. I looked at my hands to see if I was the same. There was such a glory over everything. The sun came like gold through the trees. I thought I was a part of the air and the sky. I could go to Canada. I had left behind me the land I hated. Whips and chains and fears and overseers were all behind me. Ahead was a new clear life. And then, somehow... I was lonely. I was free, but there was no one to welcome me. I remembered my home was with my brother, sister, mother. And then... My head... The earth seemed to move under me. My head seemed to split apart. And I heard the voices of my people calling me. And it was then I knew which way I had to go. I turned from the North Star. I found my way again to the door with the cross on it. It opened before I knocked. Well, welcome back, Harry. Welcome? Yes. The supper's ready. It's on the table. You, you expected me to come back? <laughs> yes, don't look surprised, friend. We knew you'd come back. But how? I didn't... Sit down. We've been a way station for guiding escaped slaves for about ten years now. Some pass this way once and we never see them again. They are satisfied to get their own freedom. Who can blame them? But now and then, one comes our way who's got the flame burning not just for his freedom, but for his brothers, sisters, friends. You burn that way, Harry. How did you know? You were thinking, what a great thing a new liberty is. You were free, but when you thought of millions who were slaves, you said, what good is my being free when my brothers are slaves? Yes, I did. Then you felt you would have no peace until the last slave was freed. That's why you came back. Many men, white and black, feel that way. It's why we run the underground. Our part is to wait for slaves to escape and to help them on. That's not the part I want to play. What part do you want? I want to go down and bring them out. I want to put them on the train and guide them. I want to be the conductor. And I went out to learn the ways of the underground. I met the abolitionists. I talked to old John Brown, to fiery Winder Phillips, to fighting Fred Douglas, to the lion Lord Garrison, to the Quakers, the Puritans, and to the conductors and agents. And some said... Lady... You ought to know who to trust when you hit the trail guiding slaves to freedom. I'll tell you. Nobody who owns a slave. Nobody. I'll tell you how it is, Miss Tubman. The Southland is like a fortress. A fortress with the gun turned inside against the people who live in it. If thee goes back too much, Miss Tubman, you'll never get out again. And I worked winters for money to buy food and clothes for slaves. A money to bribe guards and patrols. I worked the lumber mills in Canada all winter to make the money to go down into the fortress. One day, when the boss counted out my season's pay, I thought I had enough to start. Sixty-five, seventy-eight dollars. There. You earned it, all right. A right good log cutter for a woman. Sorry you ain't staying on the next season. I would, but I've got other work to do. <laughs> I was ready to do my real job. I went down into the slave grounds. I gave the signals, planned the escape. 
I talked with them, passed guns to them, planned the outbreaks and went deeper and deeper into the slave belt until my name seemed to spread before me. Sometimes I was a man, sometimes a woman. I walked, I rode horseback, I drove wagons and funeral cars, and once I took a train. Hey, you, where you think you're going? Me, sir? Gee, look, Marty, Marty, not that uh, rebel slave Tuckman. Speak up. Where's your master? Where are you going? Oh, you can see by my ticket. I'm going south. No. South to Maryland. No, I see. No, she couldn't be Tubman. Now, would a rebel slave be heading south? No, sirree. All aboard. Let her roll. <laughs> I rolled into Georgia and rolled out with slaves into Canada. I rolled and roamed the plantations. And when I knew my strength, I went into the state where I was born. I went into the region of the master I had escaped. I went back for my family. I had heard their voices called stronger and stronger. I had heard the voices of my brothers and my mother. I came into the village at early morning. I was an old woman with a cane. I walked near the slaves, searching for faces I knew. Then, just two yards from me, I did see a face I remembered. It was the face of my old master. Old woman, where do you belong? Yes? I said, where do you belong? You say something? Of course I said something. I, uh, your mouth opens, but I can't hear no words. Get out of the way, death, stone death. I got out of the way. I hobbled off to the slave quarters. I moved about until night, and I found the cabin of my brother. I opened the door. Then I stood in the doorway. I could see Louis struggling to rise. He thought I was the overseer. Is it time for work already? What time is it? It's time to be free, Louis. What? It's time to be free. Your boy. I'm Harriet. Harriet! Quiet, quiet. Wake up the overseer. Where's mother? Mother? Yes, where's mother? She and our sister were sold. Where? To whom? I don't know, South. I did my best here. I couldn't help Never them. Never mind. Wherever they are, I'll find them. I took my brother away to the new land. And I took ten more from the rice fields with us. I saved my brother. But as I looked over the land for the woman who had brought me into the world, there was a fear in me I'd never known before. It seemed I was growing cold, deaf again. I could hardly hear friends who'd say... You've had your share of the dangers, Tupman. Every slaveholder knows and hates you. You'll be worth more to the cause of freedom if you leave the railroad. Stay north. What can I do here? Ah, oh, plenty. Travel about the States and tell the people what you've done. I do travel, Mr. Garrison. Yes, but you don't make speeches. I free men. Mr. Garrison... I think one free man is worth a thousand people. I didn't say that the pressure on my head was almost too painful to bear. I knew being still would never stop it. I went down again into the armed camps. I went searching along the levees, the swamplands, looking among slave workers until I saw slaves marching from a mill. A guard was calling them on. And one came by, an old woman who looked older than I had ever pretended to be. She looked up into my face. It was my mother. Her lips parted. She said, Harriet, Harriet, my child. All right, what's holding up the line there? Move on. Mother, i come to get you. Don't talk, child. Don't talk. How will I tell you? Tell them. Please, don't talk. Just, just see. Move on up there. Move on. The line passed. She was gone. I went through the men's quarters. I found Saul. Help me, Saul. I have the plans and the money. Help me to tell everyone who wants to come with us to slip away quietly. I, I can let them know. Go back to the river and wait. I'll sing. Those who understand, they'll come. That evening, Saul walked by the cabin, walked by the overseers and the guards, and he talked to the people. By nightfall, 19, I'd stolen away quietly to the riverbank. 
At night, we waded through the waters. We struck out for Canada. We dodged patrols. We climbed hills. We moved by day and slept by night. One was afraid and said, we, We'll never make it. All that they're catching up with us. The dogs will be on us. We crossed the river again. Once we fought off a patrol and escaped to the hills. Then one man fell behind. One man said to me, I'm not going any further. You're out of your head. I'm going back to live. I won't die out here. I had an answer. An old answer I'd used before another trip. I put it against his head. Well, why do you point the gun at my head? You'll go on oh. or you'll die. Oh. Which is... He went on. Night after night, clouds covered the North Star, and I felt the trees for the moss to tell our way. We trudged on, tired, hungry. My mother kept beside me, her head high. And then we broke through the forest and into the clearing. We crossed into Canada. And this time there were people to welcome us. Harriet, Harriet, come over here. Harriet, Harriet. Harriet. Levi and Hannah, and agents from the road. There were hundreds of freed men I had brought out of the slave fields. Then I listened to their talk. And it seemed I had made my last trip. Sure you're going to stay home now, Harriet? I, I believe I will. I believe we can get another conductor. I believe I would like to rest. To rest and forget. But then my head seemed to roar again. I heard voices call. Oh, It burst in my head. I listened to the voices. They were the voices of slaves. They were the voices of my people. They were the voices of God. I was moved. I answered them. Go down, Moses. just heard the story of Harriet Tubman as presented by Destination Freedom, a special radio series dramatizing the great democratic heritage of the Negro people. Destination Freedom is brought to you by WMAQ's Department of Public Affairs and Education and the Chicago Defender. It is written by Richard Durham, and the production is under the direction of Homer Heck. <laughs> Harriet Tubman was played by Wesleyan Tilden. The supporting cast included Hope Summers, Melva Williams, Maurice Copeland, Curly Ellison, George Kluge, Arthur McCoo, Charles Mountain, Cliff Norton, and Fred Pinkert. The singer was Greg Pasco. Richard Shores composed the special music, which was played by Elwin Owen and Bobby Christian. This is Hugh Downs inviting you to be with us again next week for another in our series on the Negro in Democracy. Destination Freedom. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.